Welcome to the Our Show once again. We want to say a big thank you to all our viewers and our followers all around the world. Last week, we had a splendid interview with one of the captains uh, within the military during the revolution of 1981. That was Captain Baba Awuni. He was splendid with his um, answers to some of the questions that were, were given to him. Um, however, most of uh, the viewers still poised quite a difficult uh, threshold in terms of finding out the true colors and answers to some of the things that happened during those days. I mean, they believe that Captain wasn't very clear with certain answers. It was therefore necessary for me to bring Captain back to the studio. Welcome again, Captain, to the studio. Thank you very much. It was amazing speaking to you the last time, but a lot of our viewers believe that you are withholding certain information from them. And we are going to go through some of them. Okay? okay. So, if you don't mind, um, we spoke about Asha Fort prison. Right. Right? Um, you disarmed the people, the, the army, um, believing that you hand over Dabuga and that was the end of the story. Yes. It didn't stop there. No. You were escorted, probably compromised with a whole lot of them to Ashafort prison. What happened after that? Right. So, um, in the process of trying to complete my task, I was supposed to have reported back to the chairman. Right. That's um, Jay Rollins. Right. And before I could even get to him, everything turned round. How uh, round? How round? Round in the sense that I wasn't given a chance to go back to him. Okay. And tell him I had finished my, my task. And therefore, you know, he should let me know what was going to be the next move. Mm -hmm. Because he had told me that after disarming them and releasing Adabuka to them, um, that would be the end of the story. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think that I should just leave them like that. I needed to go back and tell him I had completed that. Okay. And by the close of the day, um, all the drama had turned into arriving at um, Oshafort. Now, what happened was when we left Gonda Barracks, mm -hmm. and we had been told that we had to go to one brigade headquarters, which, which is at Teshin, where it's been renamed. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got to one brigade headquarters and we were kept over there for about three to four hours. Um, okay. And then the next information we had was that we were to be sent to uh, First Battalion Guard Room. First Battalion, that's uh, uh, Tema, okay. Michelle Kram. And that really confused us because one of the questions I asked um, the chairman before leaving the castle with Adabuga was whether. I was supposed to keep them in the guard room until further notice or report back to him. And he told me categorically that there was nothing like guard room. I shouldn't put them in the guard room. And that was the reason why uh, that night they spent it in um, uh, Corporal Brahma's uh, quarter. Okay. Right. So I didn't understand why we had to go to um, 1B and guard room. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I had no choice. I couldn't uh, argue my way out. What I had to do was meet the chairman and find out what the reason was or what his next move was. Um, now, Major Yache was with us mm -hmm. at this time, and it was difficult for me to take certain actions without referring to him. Definitely. Yeah. So, as we were leaving, um, no, we left one brigade headquarters for Tema, mm -hmm. and on the way, we had just entered a station, um, and the convoy was stopped, and we were told that Rollins wanted to see them. So they started jubilating because at least we were going to get a breakthrough. So we, the convoy turned around. The convoy was made up of uh, two or three armored cars, and then the vehicle that we were in. We turned around, and as if we were heading towards um, the castle, the convoy turned onto the ring road. And that confused us a little bit, but we, we had escorts. And we ended up in um, the uh, army headquarters. Mm -hmm. um, those days it was in the Plaster House, now Jubilee House. And we stayed there for about an hour or so, an hour and a half. And 
who were not being told anything. Mm -hmm. And after the hour and a half, what we were told was that we were being sent to Oshafort. Now, there was a lot of confusion because I had said to them that there was nothing like guard room, nothing like prison. All right. At any point did you feel betrayed there? And did you also feel that you betrayed them? Especially your tribesmen. Well, at this time, I wasn't looking at it like uh, there was a tribal issue. Um, but I felt I was betrayed when I wasn't allowed to release Adaboga to them. Mm -hmm. That was the first point. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't aware of uh, Major Yache getting involved at all mm -hmm. until I was told that I wasn't going to, Adaboga wasn't going to be released to me after I had disarmed them. So that was the first time. Okay. So now you go to Ashaford Prison. Now, before we go there. Before you go there. Yeah. Now, let's say you are there. Yes. Because we spoke about that story the last time. So you got there. You managed to get out again. You remember you met Rollins yes. at the castle where you had that confrontation with the force commander. I think you've jumped it. Have I? Yes. Okay. Um, because that, that was the, um, the evening. Okay. So by the evening, I was now in Usher Fort okay. with, with the, the soldiers. Okay. Yeah. And we started getting assigned to cells. So Major Yacha was supposed to be in cell one with me. Okay. And the others were given a cell each. All right. Then, just as I, I had given my weapon to a so, uh, an officer who was waiting outside, mm -hmm. and I knew he was on the chairman's side of you know the, mm -hmm. the issues. Then they started you know arguing amongst themselves that if I got in, then we we're all going to be locked down, mm -hmm. and nobody could you know, chase up the issues. Mm -hmm. So they came back to me and they rushed, actually rushed on me that I shouldn't come in. I should wait, talk to uh, Rollins before, you know, coming back to, to the cells. Okay. So the agreement was that I was going to stay out that day, that mm -hmm. evening, and then the next morning um, speak with the Rollins mm -hmm. and, and find out the next move mm -hmm. and then get back because I promised them that I was going to be there with them. Mm -hmm. And now Major Yache was in there with them, so I didn't see how I was going to stay out. So that evening, I had to leave there and go to Army Mess where I had a quarter. Um, but there, were, there was curfew at the time. So um, by the time I was given a lift to Army, um, Army Mess, it was almost 6 o'clock. So I didn't have to dare go out. That means you never slept at... No, I had, no, I didn't. Okay, at this point, did you feel that you betrayed them or you thought that was a, a winning point for you to be out and defend Big time. some of the ideas? Okay. Big time, because um, at the time the whole scuffle started, mm -hmm. I was the only one who had a weapon. They were armless. Mm -hmm. I had, I had uh, disarmed them. Yeah. You know, so I, would, I was the only one who had a weapon on me all that time. Okay. And I felt I had been betrayed because it wasn't part of the deal. And um, now seeing them and telling them that, you know, uh, the Bugo was going to release to them and that, you know, all that process. I told them the truth, what I had been told, only to realize at the end that this was what it was. And so now leaving them in the Osha Fort and going... How out, long did they stay there? Oh, they, they were there till June 19th. Okay. You had the opportunity. Yes. This is where I'm trying to... You had okay. the opportunity to meet Rollins. Yes. One on one. Yes. And then you had uh, uh, one force commander. Yes. Queen. 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 Um, remember that encounter? He told you that if you stand up, he will arrest you, Graham. Yes. And you tried and Rollins said, sit down. Yes. After that point, you were then sent into a room where you were almost poisoned. Yes. Right? Yes. What happened to them? Did they, is it at this point they broke jail? Was, was it, I want to know what happened to them because from our last interview, we didn't know what happened to them. Okay. They were all in there. They were yeah. all in there. Major Yacha was released after a few months. I'm not exactly sure what, how long what, he stayed what, there. Why was he there for that long, Major Yacha? Well, he shouldn't have even have been there exactly. for one day. Yeah. But here was a case where uh, he and I said categorically to these uh, young men right. that we're going to be with them. Okay. You know, so I, you didn't sleep there, now he's there with them. Now so he's there with them. So that is a good deal. 
It wasn't a good deal. How could it have been a good deal? Well, because you didn't sleep there. By this point, you've left him to be with them. So in a way, it's a good deal for them. Th does it make sense? Because now they can trust you. Even the major is with them. And you are out now defending on the affairs. Right? Yes. So it is a good deal in some respect for them. Um, there wasn't any good deal over here. Okay. Because I felt betrayed and I would have rather wished to be in there with them all the way. You wished? Yes. Who was going to then deal with the affairs outside? Well, that was another issue. But you see, the fact is that I did not tell them I wanted to stay out to do that. Now, if they hadn't mentioned that they wanted me to be out to do that, which was to answer some, some of their anxieties, I would have been in there with them. I wasn't going to suggest I would go out. What happened to them? Well, After you encountered uh, uh, the, the prison, head of prisons, and he said you can't go near any prison. Right. What happened to them with, with Major Yache? Well, they, they were kept in there. I mean, the next day, what I did was, I mean, the reason I got to the, um, the prison director mm -hmm. was, uh, apart from joining them, I had gone to get some toiletries for them, yeah. you know, and left messages for their families that they were okay. Those days, we didn't have mobile phones, so okay. you physically had to talk to, to the person. Okay. Um, so that is what I, I, I did. Now, I was going back with the toiletries, mm -hmm. and they would not let me in, and they would not collect the staff. And that's okay. when I got to the director of prisons, okay. and he collected the items from me to deliver them to them. So from the, uh, the November until June 19th, they were in there. They were in Oshaford. No communication. There was no way. I wasn't allowed anywhere. What near. were you doing all those times? Well, those I was months. supposed to be doing my normal. Uh, um, Didn't you, know. you feel under pressure? And in any circumstance, because you've probably met these guys, they were at Gonda Barracks yes. doing fine. Uh, you went to them, gave them um, uh, a command for them to you know, surrender weapons, and they gave it. Yeah. You were to give Adebuga back. You, Partially you did that because it took you some time. And now you've let, you've let them, believing that they are going to see Rollins. Maybe even without your knowledge, you didn't even know that. Now you've let them into a prison. Yes. And you just carried on with your normal duties. What, you know, um, there were things that were happening. Like what? Things like get, getting them out. Exactly. Um, so that's what I want to know. That's what I so want to know. Yeah, okay. so what happened? Well, doing, I mean, you, you, now it's more or less your best friends, be, be, believe it or not, because you were to be seen as their uh, junior Jesus, maybe, at the point, not Rollins, because you came, you, they believed in you. They believed you and they said, listen, don't even stay in here. They, they pushed so much forward that you shouldn't stay in with them. Now you're out. And then you went about to do your normal works. Yes, but you must remember that I was still in service. I was um, a training officer in the Young Warfare School. Okay. I had to carry on with my, my duties. Um, and I had to do what my commander you know, told me. Okay. Anybody who was you know, my commander had to give instructions. I had to carry those out. One of the things that I was told was not to even step in a crowd without going through the um, army headquarters. Um, and so going even near any uh, prison was a, a no-no. But in the process, I was still trying to get to Rollins, to talk to him. But every time I was bounced off, you know, like... By who? By him, by Rollins. He refused to see you? Refused to talk to me about it. In what sense? Because you said you could now not talk on the radio or tell... There were no mobile phones, so you had to physically go there. Yes. But you were rejected by somebody. Because before you see Rollins, you would have approached Castle yourself. Yes, yes. So were you restricted in going in? I was restricted. I was restricted. I mean, there were times when uh, I would go there mm -hmm. thinking that he was there, but I would not be allowed to, to see him, you know, which was very different from what it used to be. The previous times when there were, you know, jobs to be done, mm -hmm. you know, with lives at stake, that one, uh, I remember even going to start all this. Helicopter had to be sent to fetch me from. Um, uh, what know, was from so my special about you that Rollins took so much interest in you as a captain? I said I asked that the last time. Um, you didn't give me a clean answer on that. What was so special about you? But 
this is this is a very difficult question to answer. It, because, it's not. Well, I, I don't know what he was thinking, except that you know, like. Come on, but you will know. You will know. You would have, the, because I've read. It's very difficult to get information about you, but everybody that I've come across and I've spoken to has said good things about you. You were quite strong, prominent, influential. So if you don't know all these things about yourself, it's a bit doubting. Doubting like... Uh, In the sense that... Because is it that you were too loyal to Rollins? Or to certain army head of, you know, like majors and, and force commanders and, and that they took particular interest? Because they would have probably seen some of the good works you did. You were at that chair, say, so how did chairman get to know about you? Oh, there was a number of questions there. Yeah. I mean, um, okay, so some of us were drafted. When I say drafted, we were tasked to uh, perform certain duties. Um, you see, I'm, I'm trying hard not to say that I was a, a good officer because there were a lot of good officers. But, but I mean, here, here you are in the seat with me. Yes. So let's, let's focus on that. Because yes. when you are good, you are good. It just baffles, I mean, if I'm watching this program from home, I'm just asking myself, what is so special about this man? For Chairman Rollins to take particular interest. Now, there are a lot of people that tried before you to disarm these people, and they couldn't. <laughs> you were treated special. Normally, they would just call you, a major would just call you and say, Captain, can you come to Accra? No. You were flown to the castle by helicopter. Then you were instructed to go and do it, and you did it successfully. Yes. So there should be something particular about you at the time. Well, what I know is that I was not drafted into the army. I left school and I said I was joining the army. And I was going to defend my country uh, in whatever way. So I always committed myself to any mm. task I was given. Okay. I mean, I would never say, oh, this is beyond me. The only time I would probably say something is that if you're giving me a job that required a, a higher ranking person to do it, mm -hmm. you know, then I would have a problem. You know, with that, I will make a comment, you know. But to give me a task by a superior officer, I just went ahead to do it. Did you just feel lucky for, for being one of the captains? You said there were a lot. Probably you're not just a good one. So why you? Yeah, I don't know what others were involved in. You know, and what, what were you what involved in? Well, apart from my training in the general warfare school, yeah. um, it was to do with other, other special duties that I was assigned. Like what? Um, well, I organized a, you know, food evacuation uh, from the eastern region to Accra. Accra was very hungry at a certain point, okay. and we did a lot of work, you know, on that. Um, I led this campaign, you know, anti-cholera campaign. Um, so, villages and towns in the eastern region, we made them dig pit latrines, a, a lot of that, because I mean, digging pit latrines, we didn't need excavators, you know. Mm. They, the, Man, the people um, themselves did it, yeah. and we organized that. And each one, each each village or each town that we went, we gave them two weeks. I mean, um, and then when it came to training, I was very committed, you know, to doing what I was, I was trained, and you know, I was trained to do. And maybe that endeared me to some some people, not only um, uh, officers, not only my my superiors, but even with the, with the soldiers that I I, I, I dealt with. Because I always, you know, felt and I always thought that it was good to respect the guys that you're working with. As a platoon commander, I was the only officer in a platoon of 31 men. So if I wanted to keep on showing off like, yeah, I'm the officer, the 31 men could do anything. You seem to be more involved in several cases, like uh, the food, the food, uh, sourcing of food and digging of pillar trains. So there were no times you were ever involved in any critical assignment dealing with killing. No. no. Um, well, maybe. I mean, there were certain, you know, incidents that I was uh, required to, to sort out. And when I say sort out, to investigate oh, and, really? and, and, okay. and deal with that. <laughs> now, there was at no point that we had to open fire on, on anybody. So I would not say that it was uh, me getting involved in any, you know, uh, firing issue. Okay. Yeah.
So you never killed anybody during this regime? <laughs> no. Oh, really? No, no. Oh, you are such an angel. No, but how... To disarm a group of over 400 people? No, no, no. They were not 400. They okay, were half, half, half. Are you sure? Yes, I was seven of them. No, no. I, at uh, Gonda Barrett. Yes. There were only seven. Yes. The really? seven, the seven uh, in the group. Oh, they were the only seven you were to this. Hour. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And you, and you, being quite, uh, you know, I'm I'm just quite curious as to how you were instructing people to dig pick latrines, sourcing out food for people, and all of a sudden, ooh, Captain Awuni, go and disarm them. He is fit for purpose. No, no, no. You were asking me some of the things that I did, and I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you examples. So what were some of the things you did aside the several things you did? Um, you special know, assignment, I mean. Well, special assignments are left in the barracks, isn't it? Okay, Indeed. so did you kill anybody? No, I didn't. We'll move on to that. Okay. To the next. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, Wendy, you were finally... So now, what happened to these guys again? Did they break jail or... Let's, because I want to be clear with that. The, right. The, the rest. Uh, so they were in there till June 19. Okay. When uh, jail was broken, obviously those of them who were in there had to be released from outside. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of that at all. Okay. So I wasn't I wasn't part of that. Where were you at the time? I was in Accra. Okay. Um, I was actually in um, Army Mess. Okay. Uh, which is opposite 37. Okay. Um, when the first uh, two bombs dropped, you know, and when that happened. I thought this wasn't good for me, you know, to be in Accra when something like that was happening. Why? Why? Because yeah. I was um, always associated with attempted, you know, cool. coups. Yes. Uh, that is quite strange, isn't it? Yes. And very noble man, quiet, a captain, cool, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you, 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 you were always associated and affiliated with attempted coups. Yes. Is that not strange? Well, it wouldn't be strange if you're on the other side. Otherwise, um, then I should have been given the chance to complete my task. But what had happened was not, you know, keeping the, the soldiers in there, you know, was seen as something that I was very unhappy about. And therefore, I would find any way to redress that sort of issue. So, even though I wasn't allowed to go near them and uh, I couldn't get the commanders to talk to me, you found out that it was always an issue that I was associated with anything which was an attempt because the attempt to be against um, Chairman. the PNDC uh, government, government yeah. and therefore it will be supporting anybody or everybody else. Were you, at the time of this jailbreak, concerned yourself in terms of leading them and where well, you're thinking, let's say, they take over government, you will be in trouble? Yes. You were concerned? At that time, I was. Okay. Because now I was sitting on the, on the fence. I mean, um, the PNDC government wasn't giving me the chance. It was like I was being uh, uh, pushed aside. Mm -hmm. And then here were these guys that I had put in detention mm -hmm. and probably walking around, you know, doing my own things. Mm -hmm. How were they to know that I was, you know, mm -hmm. seeking their interest? How were they to know? It was a concern that, you know, unless somehow they got the information, they would be thinking, ah, I played a trick on them. That's how it was going to look like. So what were you thinking? Run away? Not run away, but not be in that location. <laughs> Which location? Which in is in Accra. Accra. Yes. So what were you planning to do? Get to? My, my, my Go plan to was to get to get back to my unit. Yes. yes. Why particular? Because so that's where I belong. You go home when in such <laughs> circumstances. So you were trying to escape then? I wasn't trying to escape. I was trying to get back to my unit. <laughs> really? Are you sure about that? Yes. So, yes. But you never prayed. So at this point, what was your sentiment like? Should they take over? Or you wanted PNDC to stay in power? At, the, at that very point, what was well, going through your mind? Who, who would you wish to have you know, taken over? Oh, I, I, can't, I can't mention anybody because in circumstances like this, anyone at all, you know, depending on who leads the, uh, the coup d'etat. You were on the fence there. I was so, on the fence, so yes. So if you were to fight with them, yes. who were you going to fight for or against? 
Oh, I would, I would, I would team up with these guys against, against the, the government. Okay. Yes. Hold right. up. Okay. I trust you on that. Yes. You were given refuge yes. by Rollins at the castle. You slept, you were almost poisoned. Yes. Although you don't know who it was. Yes. Um, but was there anything else that happened during your stay at the castle that you didn't disclose? Um, well, I had been there twice. That was the second time I was actually being kept over there. Like uh, it was a, a close arrest, stayed there till the next day. Okay. And the previous time, there was uh, uh, a situation that, that actually happened. And Rollins had taken me into this room to say that I had to stay there till the next morning. So I get into the room and it was empty. Empty bed, but a bed laid. So I went and just sat down on the bed for a while and I decided to relax. But I had picked the magazine from, from outside, from the reception, Reader's Digest, okay. you know, which I hadn't seen for a long while. So I kept that. Then I took it into the room. So I was lying there just thinking about what was happening. Then I felt the door being opened. So I got up, went and, you know, opened the door. You know, there was the main door and then the, um, a fly-proof door, mm -hmm. called a mosquito net door. Oh, whatever. okay. Yes. And that was the one that I had liked. So I heard someone, someone you know, talking at it. So I opened the door and that was, uh, had been liked. I opened that too and Rollins was, was there. He came in. He came into the room and went straight to the air conditioner and turned it on, you know, and walked out. And I thought, hey, a guy likes me. So <laughs> I thought, but the windows are open. And windows open to the um, Gulf of Guinea. I mean, a lot of fresh air coming. And then the air conditioner on. So what I did was that I shut the window, you know. I shut the window. I went and lay down, and I thought, just let's leave the door. He could come back and turn it off. I don't know. So I lay down there with the, the magazine, with the magazine that I had, was reading because there was light coming from the top, the back of it, of, of the wall, so I could read that. And all of a sudden, I thought I heard the door opening again. So what I did was I looked this way to see who was coming in this time because now the door was opening, and in entered uh, Mr. Kojochikata. And he had a folder like this, and he always walked like that. And then the right arm was under the folder, so he was like this. And I thought, it's a bit strange. And then he said, oh, you're not asleep. I said, no, sir. He said, ah, uh, OK. Then he walked out. So I lay there for what I thought was about a minute or so. And then I jumped up. I thought, wait a minute. What is going on over here? So I went, turned off the air conditioner open the windows, push the bed against the door, said, now nobody's going to come in. But I looked outside of the, the, the window, and those were the rocks down there. There was no way I was going to, you know, jump onto those rocks. So I tied the blanket and um, the bed sheet to see how far that could go. And I realized, no, if I had to use that as a ladder, I was going to be in trouble. Mm. So now let me stay in there like that. So I did that. Just stayed in till, you know, day broke. And I came out. Um, and when I did, I saw a few soldiers around, and everybody was looking at me like I was a ghost. You know, that is when it started dawning on me that what happened the previous night wasn't for nothing. There was probably something being planned. I don't know. Did you see a gun? I didn't. Kojo Chikata never held a gun. No, I mean, he had a folder on him like that, and then the right hand was under the, the folder. You but never saw a gun? No, 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 I didn't see anything. And if it was a gun, maybe it was a pistol, but not, not uh, a rifle. So he had a pistol? I'm not saying that he had. I'm just saying that he looked a You bit never awkward. saw anything at all? No. Nothing at all? No. Okay. You were back at Insane Prison? Right. You're taking me back to Insane Prison? That's right. Okay. And who did you say was with you in the same cell? You were, you were with uh, DeGrab Johnson, yeah, Chris Asher, 
Um, and some the no, not in the same cell. Okay. On the same block, on the Johnson same was there with the uh, Johnson, as you call him, doctor. Okay. Um, they were on the block, but okay. in the cell itself, um, I had um, Chris Asher, then I had uh, Michael J, um, then I had uh, Kublenu. Is it? Yeah, Kublenu. Um, I can't remember his first name. Then there was a. Uh, one of my mates, you know, Captain Bimbo, um, then me, and somebody else. I mean, there, there were six of okay, us. Okay, on your arrival at Insawan Prison, you almost hailed as a hero, in a way, because everybody was looking up to you. Yes. Again, I'm bringing, bringing you back to the same question. You were just an ordinary captain who adhered to instructions. Why did they believe you could take over? or help overthrow the government so that they can be released. Why did you think that was a huge news at Dinsawan Prison? Well, news will travel in all sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. um, and if I had made an attempt, it was likely that I would have succeeded if I had. Because of the, the situation that we were in. Why didn't you ever try? I was being loyal to to the country. The country? Yes. Loyal to the country? Yes. I mean, we don't want that kind of situation. And in any situation like that, you can be sure that there's going to be a lot of... Uh, Bloodshed. But then the, a lot of people died. Yes. So who are you trying to be loyal to? Were you trying to be loyal to the chairman or to the country? Because a lot of people were killed. You were almost killed. And you had opportunity, so why didn't you take it? Okay, the, the, other, the other thing was, I hadn't prepared myself for that. You know, at the time that I was called in, yeah. I hadn't prepared myself that I was going to do it. it. It's not a matter of saying that you're going. You'll be reckless to just get up and say, I'm going to do this. You need to plan to know who are going to collaborate with you and so on. You need, you need a lot of planning in that. And I hadn't planned that because it was mm -hmm. never in my thoughts to say I was going to do something like that. Now, maybe out of desperation, something could have happened. Okay. And it was, you know, it almost did um, at the time we were uh, in Gonda. At Brahma's yes, place. Yes, it almost did. It almost? Yes. Why didn't it happen? Who stopped it? Again, we had to stop it, and but we were not sure of... Um, the, the, the enemy because of where we were there was no information coming so you couldn't just say that you were going to start firing because the place had been surrounded this time with armored cars and there was a jet flying over so with all of that if you go and do something foolhardy then it means you you just you just been stupid so we hadn't planned anything the only thing that could have happened, if somebody had opened fire mm -hmm. on us, then in the process of returning fire, nobody would know. I don't get said in this interview that you were ready to fight. Yes. You had been betrayed. Yes. At this point at Brahma's house, even before that, yes. because Chairman had lied to you. Yes. You were still not convinced that this was the time? Exactly what I'm saying, that you need, you need to have prepared for it. So you think you the people, have, people who were at Gonda Barracks were not sufficient to probably lead? Well, if, if we had planned it, if we had thought about it and planned it, even with uh, two, three hours of planning, in the situation that we were in, it probably would have worked. But we hadn't planned anything. And you don't want to go into a situation like that when you haven't planned because it would just be suicidal. But... To say that I was ready to fight, yes, because at the time, anybody opening fire on us would have had fire returned. You know, we, we couldn't uh, um, press the trigger first because we were not sure of the, the size of the enemy. You were not sure of the size of the enemy. Yes. Where was Akatapari at the time? He was in the group. Was there any influence in your decision no. as not to fight? No, 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 no. no. Okay, we are done with that segment. We are going to the judges. 
you discovered the bodies. I was one of those. Who did. You, yeah, you were one of those who discovered the bodies. And it was a horrific scene. I'm sure you've had, you heard about it. And you were probably surprised as to what had happened to them. But you had an opportunity to speak to, um, I'm not sure whether Medica was there with you in, um, in, in Zawan prison. Who was there? Um, Jandu. Jandu. Jandu and I think Senyo. Senyo and Teko, yeah. yeah. Yes. They narrated stories to you. Mm -hmm. Some clearly declared their innocence in that. Obviously, they pointed hands at Amedeka because it is either him, Rollins, Chachu Shikata, or Nanak Nodu Ajima Rollins, who probably might know who killed those judges. Right. I know you were not part of it. You only, by chance, got to witness the scene. Who do you believe? probably were involved in it, after speaking to some of these uh, accomplices in the, in the crime? Well, they, um, the person they were pointing, uh, they were pointing at was um, America. Right. He was the leader of that group. Right. And he had been given the task. They were getting their uh, uh, instructions from him. So he never told them where the instructions were coming from. All they told me, but I know that um, Chris Asha, you know, actually interrogated them over and over and over again, you know, even before I, I, I got there. So he probably has a, a full book on that. But with uh, um, uh, Jandu, he told me that he, he had nothing to do with it. He was only dragged in there because uh, America called him and asked him to come or they were going to do some small operation. And then he got, he got there and they went and picked up this. He didn't even know them. That's what he said. He didn't even know them. Um, so the master brain is a bit difficult. If, if I say something, it's like, okay, maybe I think this person or that person. But it would not be fair to point at somebody and say, this, what the, you know, this is the, the person behind it. Those that were killed, did you believe they were innocent? Yes, I didn't think. You mean the, the three judges and the... Yeah. And the yeah. None of them deserve to die. None of them. What, what did they do? Apart from doing their jobs, what did they do? They didn't deserve to die at all. And I, I think that, you know, answers cannot be shoved anywhere. You have to, we have to look for those answers. Whatever it takes to go at the answers to be good. Because three judges, and a female amongst them. It was a very bad sight. And, and the, the retired captain, whatever he did, he was only doing his job. He didn't kill anybody. So it was completely wrong. They did not deserve to die. Did you know that the woman, the lady judge, was actually breastfeeding at the time? Yes, we heard, we heard of that. You know that there was a six-month baby involved? We heard of that, too. Okay. There will be more surprises coming. Right. Yeah? Okay. Okay. You got out of Insawan prison and you were made redundant. You retired. I was retired on the same day. On the same day. Without any notice, any justification, because you were heading to Achiasi from Tema. You heard the news, you were to go and get a pass, and there you go. You found yourself in the same prison. You were not the only one made, you know, redundant or retired from the army. A lot of top, top officials. Was it fair? To talk about fairness in this, how could it have been fair? It was not fair at all. And it was some selfishness on some, some people's part to have retired, you know, that many officers. If you ask any of them, if you ask any of those who were retired in that, in that sort of situation, you see that there was no justification. In fact, that situation is like causing a serious financial loss to the state. Because at that time, there's a process that you follow to get somebody retired. Well, in my case, well, I don't know. They, mm. I was told my services were no longer required. That was what was written in on my, my sheet. Services no longer required. Whatever was the case, 
Nobody said what I had done. Just said service is no longer required. And a lot of others were made to even abandon everything of theirs. They abandoned families, senior officers, majors, lieutenant colonels, and so on, were all just thrown out like that. I mean, now I was still young, so I could do things. Like, I came to, to, to the UK, I could still do things. But there were senior officers here who could do nothing. They couldn't do what we could do. I started as a, a guard, and I was being promoted. Because to, at one point when I said I was a, a, a captain, I, I lost the job. They did not give it to me at all. Um, so after that, I had to hold back on my, my CV, you mm -hmm. know, and then rose up to that. The point I'm making is that a lot of them, maybe 90%, I haven't got the real figures, but to say 90% of uh, senior officers were just kicked out like that with no reason, messing their lives up. And nobody is saying anything. It has affected the Ghana Armed Forces. You really want to go to um, the Retired Officers uh, Club at a meeting day, and you see all these brains sitting there. Every time I've gone for that meeting, I sit at the back, and I'm just admiring these senior officers sitting right in front of me whose lives were sort of wasted. Because they all joined because they wanted to be soldiers. They wanted to serve in the armed forces. And somebody just cut, you know, their, their lives like that. So there's no justification in that. Up to date, have you received any entitlement? Because I'm sure when you retire, there, regardless of what age you are, there are some... Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so um, the conditions that I was retired on uh, entitled me to um, my pension. So I did not um, go for anything until I returned to Ghana in 2006. I actually went back there the first time, 2001, and I kept going. Um, re, re, you know, resigned from my job over mm. in 2003, but 2007 or 2006 to 8 was when I was told, oh, you are entitled to your pension. And of course, when I read that sheet of paper, it says, yes, I was entitled to my pension. So I now had to start processing that. And, and so since uh, about three, four years ago, I've, I've been you know, paid some, some pension. How much, roughly? I'm, I'm not sure, but is it, is it quite substantial? No. It's, it's enough to get in my fuel for a month. <laughs> that is bad. You were now out of the army. Yeah. What made you, what made you get out of uh, the country, Ghana? One of the uh, issues I faced was the continuous suspicion right. that I could do something because it was still fresh. I mean, so I decided to stay in Tema. Uh, people were not comfortable with that. My family, you know, they were always worried. Mm. Um, so I moved to uh, Okumeni. I don't know if you know Okumeni, uh, near Kede. Okay. I had some friends over there. Okay. So I decided to go and stay, you know, in, in the bush a little bit mm -hmm. and enjoy. If I was missing uh, the jungle. So I went, I went <laughs> over there for a while. Okay. And every time I got to Accra, yeah. there was one piece of news or the other. Yeah. That I was in the uh, out out in the jungle there training gorillas. Yeah. You know, which of course wasn't true. Mm -hmm. So at a point the whole idea was try to leave. And then mm -hmm. I got told I couldn't travel. Mm -hmm. I couldn't leave the country. Okay. Um and I was asking why. Nobody would tell me anything. Eventually I was told that the chairman said I should not leave. He was the one who gave the orders. I thought that was a bit odd. You are not giving me a job here, and then you, I can't leave the country. Then I got told that I was to be appointed uh, the assistant secretary for fuel and power. Those days, that was the ministry, fuel mm. and power. And I thought, wait a minute. Mm. I haven't been trained for that. I will not know what to do inside it. The only thing I'll be happy with, with fuel and power is to supply myself mm -hmm. and my friends. But what to organize, I wouldn't know. And I thought it was actually a setup, you know. They will, I will be pulled somewhere and then be messed up, you know, because the first time I managed to escape, 
Um, but this time it might not be so. That's what I thought. Okay. So I spoke with a couple of friends and they told me I should stay clear of that. So the alternative was to leave the country. And uh, that's, what, that's what I did. Um, sometime, I think it was February or so. Okay. February of um, 80, 84. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You managed to now get to the UK. Yes. You decided to go back. From your previous interview, it appeared that, oh, I wanted to go back, so I met Charles Taylor. He wanted arms. I wanted to get back to my country. Was that really what happened? Well, it wasn't... I won't say, yeah, I would say to some extent, yes, that's what was happening. But I also had other interests. What? The interest was to get back to the country. Um, and that was my country. Whatever I had to do, including fighting, we would do that. We would now fight because we would know how to plan ourselves, uh, our operations, and so on. You met with the president of Burkina Faso? Yes. No, I didn't. I didn't meet him directly. I met with his... Uh, Representatives. Okay. Yeah. And then Chastela. Yes. Chastela didn't just want arms, but you also trained some of his soldiers, right? Or no. you were you were to train. I know you went to Libya, um, Lebanon, and all that. Yes. Yeah. But and therefore you were seen as a very uh, top guy. I mean, a very, not just a captain. That is what I'm trying to drive at. You were not just a mere captain. You were a captain with something special. So you met Chastela and also reps from Burkina Faso. What was the whole meeting about? Well, coming back to Ghana to do, getting in, all you needed to do was to write like Adebuga did uh, through a lady and Rollins turned him down or didn't respond for three times. You were just to probably write. Your involvement with Chastela and reps from Burkina Faso, arms exchange. Tell us more about it. It's just a bit. Well, I'm certain there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, um, I couldn't just walk into um, the country and say I was back. And I wasn't alone in my sort of situation. There were hundreds of others. And, and we're talking about maybe even uh, um, people from the, the services. Yeah. But to talk about uh, civilians who were out there because they couldn't get back, you know, there were hundreds or thousands of them. So, if we allow the situation to remain the way it was, a lot of them were going to be staying out forever and ever. So, as our only choice, it wasn't anything that we could negotiate. Our only choice was to come in with force. You had that chance. You had the opportunity to take over, didn't you? No. At some point? No, you, 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 you had the opportunity. I know, I know why I'm saying that because I know you can't say it on there, but you had the opportunity. Who stopped you? We stopped ourselves. Yeah, who st you, you stopped yourselves. Yes. Why? I mean, because we're not, we're not ready for it. And as I said earlier, if someone had pressed a trigger, had fired at us, then hell would have broken loose. But... In the situation that we found ourselves, mm -hmm. it was going to be a deliberate attack. And we would have to plan it properly. Because you don't go in there hoping that you will succeed. You had you support from Chastilla. You had support from Burkina Faso. Yes. And the country was not being run properly. Yes. You had the opportunity. Okay, so you're talking about uh, Chastilla and... Uh, That's right. Yes. I'm talking about after exile. Okay. Right. There were infiltrations. Right. We got people who uh, had been sent to, you know, double cross the operations. Yeah. yeah. Some of them we knew, others we didn't. Um, so now we had to start planning against those that we knew mm -hmm. and then think of how we're going to neutralize the others. Mm -hmm. But the support now wasn't going to come directly like that because, for instance, Kampare wasn't too happy that. Some information had been leaked. He wasn't happy, you know. And we didn't leak it. We didn't make it go out. So it was something internal, or somebody had managed to infiltrate into our, our, our system. Then we also had um, politicians mm -hmm. who 
were um, against the whole idea of any military takeover. Okay. Because they said um, in 1992 there was going to be elections and you know there will be a change of government. Nobody foresaw that uh, PNDC <laughs> was going to come back without a P. Okay. You know. Um, <laughs> but they also did not help our cause at the time. And to think that whatever we're doing wasn't for us as individuals, it was for the country. So if some members of the, uh, the country were against what we were doing and we didn't know them, we couldn't silence them, we couldn't ask them to stop what they were doing so that we could go ahead, um, then it was difficult for us to just move in like that. Um, just at the, at the end of the day, you want to fight for somebody. I was okay. I could have stayed here for as long as I wanted. But there were older people who needed to go back home. They needed to go back home. And that was the only way they could go back. Not going to negotiate. And these were the people who were undermining, undermining uh, the whole process. So anytime I was out of um, the country, there was buzz around that something was going to be done. You know. But I wasn't the only... My group wasn't the only one. We knew that there were others who were doing things. But we knew that we had a common cause. So whatever it was going to be, at the last minute, we would all get together and do what we had to, to do. And the whole idea was to hand over power back to you know, uh, civilians and let civilians run it. If you are in uniform and you want to be in politics, you put down your uniform. There's a process for it. Um, so yes, we didn't do it because we were being undermined. And there was no point in us going um, to risk our lives and the lives of other people. You are indeed a lawyer captain. Well, you are indeed a lawyer captain. Because I, I have researched and I know you had the opportunity to take over. You had that incentive, but you didn't. And for what reason, like you said, there were infiltrations. So I respect that. Yeah, and, and plus, I wasn't that ambitious because I didn't think I could, I could be a, a president. You know, I, I wouldn't think like a Master Sergeant Doe and think that, hey, I can also be a president. Um, so since I wasn't prepared for it, I would not deliberately walk into it. Okay. What is your relationship now with Rollins? There's no relationship. At all? No really. Would you ever want to meet him again? Nope. I, I, well, there was an attempt to get me to meet him. And what I said, in fact, I kept saying, no, no, no. Then I said, look, if I have to meet him as a former president, I have no choice. If you should summon me, just like uh, um, ex-president Kufo will summon me and I'll go. If he summons me as ex-president, I'll go. But if he just calls me as any other person, like Rollins, oh, come and let's, no, no, no. I don't, I don't need that because there are answers to be provided to get me into that. I was compromised the last time we, we spoke about it. And I can't forget that. He's got to say sorry to a whole lot of people. You know, for me, life has not been that difficult. I had to work hard at it. But there are others who have not recovered. And the country hasn't recovered because of what happened from those days. So I don't see why I would go and have a, a cup of tea with him. But a lot of people hail him for fighting corruption. There are even others saying they need him now, uh, situations like this. People are failing to understand. In as much as you believe that he did worse, people hail him and they say, look, we need a, a strong leader like him. Do, do you believe in that? Do you, do you believe he actually fought corruption? No. No. There was corruption in, in, in those times. I mean, things that I can't, I can't, uh, I can't prove now, uh, but a lot of things happened, and I will not believe that. Corruption is not just about going to grab money and that kind of thing. But if you go on an operation with soldiers and you get back for lunch, you're supposed to be eating the same sort of food. Now, you give the soldier uh, yam and some which is greener than green to eat 
And meanwhile, your plates, you're not eating the mess thing, you're eating them from plates. And the label on the plate says Star Hotel. What do you think you're doing to that, that soldier? He's been out there fighting. You come back and you eat that. You see, in, if you're not corrupt, and maybe that's the only food you can eat, you pour the food into a mess tent. You are not pretending, but you have to relate with the people that you are moving along with so they can trust you. But as it was, who were the people who were uh, at the forefront of all of this? Where are they? Mention, mention their names, and let's, let's see where they are. Mention their names. Somehow the good Lord has been with majority of them, and they've been abroad and changed their lives and so on. They've ended up earning dual citizenship, you know. Um, but that's not how some of us wanted. When I left sixth form, went straight to the military academy. Just about two months break, you know, to fool around. Went straight. So it was like uh, discipline, discipline, discipline all the way through. But what happened, and, you know, someone at this time say that, uh, oh, uh, he fought corruption. How old is that person? That person who says, yeah, bring him back. Yeah, those days they said, let the blood flow. And innocent blood was spilled. The generals who, who, who were just destroyed like that. Yeah, you count, and those were soldiers. Those were officers. And he just said, let the blood flow. And that's what happened. They can say that you should bring him back. There's no problem. They should go and vote. This time he's voting. But I know that people would, some people would say that because they don't have the background. They don't know what happened. Yeah? The person has not been trained to, to, to run a country, has not done any um, uh, management courses, even to say that I can manage a little company. And all of a sudden, you made a person a minister. Hey, some mm. of them did well, but there were others who were just flapping. Like me, if mm. I had been a bit ambitious, I was going to be deputy secretary for fuel and power. Yeah. But I had to run because I knew I would fail. I wasn't trained for it. Corruption, it started long ago. Is there anything he did that you will commend him for? Yes. <clears throat> he brought uh, awareness of um, self-help, you know. And at a certain point, you know, jumping into a, a, a ditch to help dig, was commendable. I mean, he brought himself that low. So, if you say um, that it is good to dig and you jump in there and you start doing yourself, anybody would feel endeared to you. You say, hey, you are practicing what you are saying. So, yeah, in that particular case, I would, I would say that he, he, he did well. Bringing the officer's attitude that way for even um, Civilians who could not get to soldiers and that sort of thing to 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 appreciate that you know we could all do do things that they never expected positive things, yeah. But the lack of respect for elders is what you you can't you can't correct that. It's difficult. Mm. It's difficult to correct that, and a lot of them have been thrown you know off like that. You start insulting. You know, your seniors, you forgot that you get there one day. And the genius will insult. Because you give an example that if you're a genius, you can insult the senior. That is the thing that I won't do. Mm. If I want to insult, if I really want to insult, it is somebody whose level I have gone past. I'm not going back there. I can say, hey, anybody below 40 uh, uh, is not serious. I, can't, I won't say anybody above 60 is not serious. I won't say that, you know. It may be not a very good analogy, but what I'm saying yeah. is that there are things that he did that you say positive. But he had the opportunity to turn Ghana around seriously. Um, Sankara did that. Sankara was turning uh, Burkina, Faso. Burkina Faso around. So why not us? And Ghana, you know, in those days, <laughs> we're doing a whole lot of things. Recently, um, Rwanda had, uh, is rolling off uh, the first VW Beetle. Ghana would have been so many you know, light years ahead. We did that long ago. 
with so many factories. And that would have been the time because he had opportunity to force things. Just imagine me going to Aquatia and saying that you have to dig uh, eight pit latrines, four for females, four for male, within two weeks. And they did it. Because the, 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 the situation enabled us to do positive things. Yeah? So he had a very good opportunity. Now it's been made so difficult for all the young ones. You know, that they will not even understand the fact that you have to give some respect. And you find young ones insulting older ones. And then if you are the older one who has taught them how to insult, now you're getting it. What do you say? But it's all part of the corruption. What would be your advice to the current administration, especially speaking quite bitterly about the generals that were retired from the army without proper processes. What, what, what do you think the car, current government should do? With regards to the, the generals or... The generals, okay. the, whole pros, the whole revolution. Okay. Do you think, because clearly he... Did Rollins... Yes, probably he, he was in charge. But yet, most, most of his followers are saying, listen, Rollins didn't do anything. Most of his instructions were intercepted. People did what they wanted to do, all in the name of Rollins. Okay. So he doesn't need to apologize to anybody. Oh, he does. The back was stopping with him. You know, if you're a leader, it's not just about sitting there being a leader, but you need to take uh, um, control of yourself. You need to take uh, all the blame that comes. Mm -hmm. You sort it out. Out there, you take all the hits. Yeah. Then when you go behind closed doors, you can check those guys over there. But you don't stand and say, hey, uh, you, Minister of this, you should have done that. You don't do that. That is not leadership. You know? And, and, and yes, a lot of people did a lot of things. But you wanted results. So if you have asked a number of people to do things, you must have a list of what you are expecting, the results you are expecting, and make sure that you can check that. And if that is not coming back to you, then there's a problem with the leadership. But going to your, your previous one about, uh, your previous question about what should be done. Yes. I think that, you know, and this situation is actually uh, recurring, that a lot of officers are there with all their brains and all they do is sit down, relax, read newspapers, listen to news and so on. The government can use these people. You go to other countries, and ex-service is not just about ex-service. Uh, um, my, my, what my commander would, would say to me, or an idea that he would give me, is something I would have taken a lot of time to arrive at that. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with using all this expertise mm -hmm. in the various positions? You'll be engaging them, so they'll be busy. At the moment, almost all of them are receiving uh, uh, benefits, the pension, even though it is not very good. And I think that government should, look, should be looking at that, making sure that they are comfortable so that those who are coming up will say, hey, when I get to that age, when I retire, I'm going to be taken care of. So now let me just commit. But if you don't, if you don't deal with these people, anybody else who is coming now will just be thinking, let me prepare something for myself. Those days when we were in the service, I'm talking about the 80s, I'm telling you, you, you went out and you were not worried about anything. You just wanted to go and do your job and get back. So if somebody said, oh, uh, I'll give you a plot of land to, to, to build, I will, I will tell you something you'll never forget it. What do you mean? <laughs> you know, wh why do you want to do that? I'm here to soldier. I mean, that's what we used to say. Okay. You know, you're here to do the job. Okay. Um, but the times have changed. Mm -hmm. So to get commitment, to get people to remain patriotic, mm -hmm. let them understand that something is being prepared for you. So when you leave here, that's where you're going. The policemen, firemen, ambulance, all these people are committing themselves. And there, there's nothing for them. you find them struggling to even get their pension. In other countries, ex-service, hey, you are held in the highest. And you are blaming Rollins for I'm this I'm not time. blaming him for it. Okay. But okay, so even in his time, yeah. what did the hierarchy do? What did the hierarchy do? But, That's when something could have been started. But I'm not blaming him. I'm not saying I'm blaming okay. him. You're asking me but about... But he's part of it. Pardon? He's part of the process. Yes. Okay. 
he's, 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 he's part of it. I mean, he started from his era. And what I'm saying, at that time, he could have turned things around and made it more comfortable. You know, but not to say that because he didn't do it, it shouldn't be done now. I know you are quite, you are heavily informed about issues in Ghana, politically, um, and other, other, other means. Do, do you believe the current stand of the country is in a bad shape than it used to be at your time? If you say heavily involved, you are really promoting me. I'm, I'm not. I'm not that heavily. I, 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 I <laughs> yeah. but I'm not that heavily involved. I mean, I, I see the situation like um, in other, like other people who, who see it. Uh, maybe I know a little bit more because of something that I, 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 I relate with, um, and I know there are difficult times. What I do know, which is the difference between now and before, mm -hmm. is that now. We, we seem to have the intellectuals, the people who know what to do to organize and so on. Unlike before, someone comes from a secondary school and straight they are made a, a, a head of a department and that kind of thing. Where is the experience for them to be able to do that? But if you can put even people uh, and others below them can uh, sort of watch their attitude, see how they do things, they probably will start, you know, organizing themselves to do a better job. You see, um, I used to say that, uh, like the previous government, there were a lot of young guys in the government handling affairs. Personally, I think that they were not given enough mentoring because some of them were dropping their guards, insulting people, disrespecting and that kind of thing. That was the bad part of it. The good part was that you had young blood in the system. So, what I'm hoping this, this government will do is to engage the younger people as well. Get them involved in what is being done. Because whatever you do, they are going to be taken over. Whether we like it or not, they are going to be taken over. And if you want your legacy to, to go on forever, then we have to have that succession plan. That you train them, make them you know, very patriotic, and let them carry on. This day, Yesterday we were talking about something. I said, hey, I was a young pioneer. I met a Russian and we were talking. I said, hey, I went to uh, Russia in 1965. He said, really? And the guy started, and my sentiment started, you know, going back to 1965. When I was saying, Kruma never dies. And today I will say the same thing. Yeah. Why? Because there were structures in place, but obviously some people didn't like it. That's how come we got into all that problem and we resulted in uh, staying in the position that we are now. Yeah, but it would be a good idea for anyone who is coming in to uh, think about what has happened. Otherwise, you are not a good learner. You learn from the mistakes of uh, other people who have been before you, and then you improve on what they've done right. Hmm. For instance, we talk about sanitation. Right. The whole place is filthy. Mm -hmm. What are we waiting for? Uh, equipment from China mm -hmm. to come and deal with that? What did we use before China even uh, got to the stage that they are in that they can produce uh, all this uh, equipment? W what happened to the brushes and things? Because somebody is not tackling the, prob the problem headlong. So we're going to continue to have that problem. What happens if someone comes out of the university, I don't have a job. You say, look, there's a job over here. Uh, it's managing the cleaning of uh, Nima Gata. Let him say he's not going to do it. Hey. Six months, you have to do it. If you want a job, start from somewhere. When I came to the UK, I started as a guard, security guard. I didn't say I'm an officer, so hey, I want a management job. Well, one of my colleagues did that, and he was out of a job for a long time. He said he didn't understand why me as a manager, I was right. suggesting that he did this. Okay. So it is important that we can get the, the youth you know, involved, but more importantly, to talk to these guys, mentor them. And we've got people sitting there, retired, you know, personnel. We've even got a, a retired uh, UN Secretary General. Are we using him that much? Maybe yes. But what I'm saying is that we have people who can mentor, you know, down to whatever level that we think. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure seeing you once again, and I wish you all the best. Thank we'll you. We'll catch up in Ghana. Right. Thank you very much. Viewers, you. this is where time will bring us. 
We like to say thank you and remember, keep watching on D T V and remember you can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching and goodbye.